Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Five most important breakout players for this Notre Dame program heading into 2024. And Dill, this is probably the conversation that a lot of Notre Dame fans are having heading into 2024, where you know we know this Notre Dame team is going to win a lot of football games in 2024. That's not necessarily the question. I think the question surrounding this Notre Dame team is how good can they be in 2024. And I think a large part of that conversation happens with some of these breakout candidates heading into the 2024 year. Want to get into our five most important breakout players for this Notre Dame program. Fired up to get into it. Before we do, and as always, one just want to say thank you to you guys. And it and it's been a blast taking deep dives from multiple different angles of this Notre Dame program during the offseason. The amount of support you guys continue to show truly does mean a lot. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Much more importantly for the Notre Dame fans, this roster is just full of breakout candidates. We're probably not going to talk about all of the breakout candidates that this Notre Dame team has. Let us know in the comment section some players that we might be sleeping on. We learn a ton from you guys in the comment section. We'll chop it up down there. And Dill, without further ado, let's get into it and One of the more contested topics around this Notre Dame team the last couple of years has been the wide receiver play. And I think there's some truth to both sides. I think obviously the quarterback play has not been good enough for Notre Dame, but I don't think a lot of Notre Dame fans would push back and say the wide receiver room needs to be a little bit better last year. You go back to 2023, take a look at the three or the two leading pass catchers. For Notre Dame, it was tight end Mitchell Evans, who is one of, if not the best tight end in the country heading into 2024, but also Chris Tyree, who is a former running back that transitioned to wide receiver. At at least in my mind, that kind of paints the picture that you want a little bit more juice from the wide receivers in this Notre Dame offense. I think Marcus Freeman certainly agreed with that. He goes out and gets wide receiver Chris Mitchell from FIU. Now, we're immediately kind of just bending the rules of breakout candidates because Chris Mitchell has broken out at the collegiate level. I think the question is, can Chris Mitchell break out for this Notre Dame program at the highest level of college football in 2024? And if he did indeed does, that makes this Notre Dame team extremely dangerous in the 2024 year. And I think the thing you really look at with Mitchell is having a bit more versatility than maybe some of the Notre Dame wideouts you've seen. Yeah. You've seen some of those bigger wideouts who maybe don't move quite as well. You maybe have too many guys who work out of the slot or are more specific to certain skill sets, which, again, you need, and those guys are valuable. Like, I'd kind of put Jordan Faison in that camp, but very valuable for what he does. But Chris Mitchell, you kind of look, his ability to operate after the catch, his ability to get downfield – I think they need more of that type of guy because you kind of look at what Mike Dembrock's going to want to do and what he was able to do at LSU when they had a stable of that type of guy where they could, again, hit the ball or make plays down the field, run really good routes, run after the catch. He was able to do a lot, spread that offense out, and be really effective. I think Notre Dame wants to do that. I think that's why Mike Dembrock's coming in, and I think they need the wide receivers to kind of play up. Well, fires up. What fires me up about Chris Mitchell is kind of what you were saying. Like there are so many different ways that you can get Chris Mitchell involved in this Notre Dame offense. One, he is, for lack of better terms, just a dog after the catch. I mean, the short area quicks, the ability to make people miss in space. This is a guy that just get the football in his hands and let good things happen. How many times did we say that about Notre Dame wide receivers over the last couple of years? It wasn't that often. But I think secondly, you look at Chris Mitchell working vertically down the field, was targeted 31 times, 20-plus yards down the field last year. Dill, 45% completion percentage. When targeted 20-plus yards, this is a guy that can win vertically down the field as well. So many different ways that you can get him involved in this offense. I, I think you're legitimately looking at a true wide receiver one for Notre Dame. And again, how many times have we said that about Notre Dame wide receivers heading into a college football season. I think you can say that with Chris Mitchell and kind of what excites you is this wide receiver room is just full of breakout candidates, right? Jaden Greathouse going into year two, kind of one of my guys heading into 2024. You mentioned Jordan Faison. You have uh, kind of some young true freshmen who are also really talented. Bo Collins, 
I'm kind of fired up about what this Notre Dame wide receiver room can be with Mike Denbrock coming in with a better quarterback, at least in my mind, with Riley Leonard. This Notre Dame passing attack has the chance to really be special. And if it is special, I mean, this Notre Dame team, extremely that, dangerous. That in a whole new stratosphere because it's for a while they've, they've grinded you out, played really good defense, have been able to run the ball, but they haven't had a real explosive offense in a while, it seems like. Number two breakout candidate, and a very, very important one at that, left tackle Charles Jagasaw. This I, I, I love this kid coming out of high school. He's got a wrestling background. He's a massive frame who's a fluid athlete. Obviously, you guys know who've been listening for a while. I love my wrestlers on the offensive line. And I think a lot of people from the outside looking in, quote-unquote, casual Notre Dame fans who aren't necessarily that familiar with this Notre Dame roster might say, Oh, yeah, we're concerned about the offensive tackle spot heading into 2024. On paper, you lose two NFL guys, Joe Alt being the best tackle we saw in the country in 2023. I think a lot of Notre Dame fans who know this roster are kind of sitting there and saying, we got the chance to be really, really good at the offensive tackle position. And if that is the case in 2024, you're looking at a, a truly one of the better tackles in the country in Charles Jagasaw, who certainly has all the traits to be that guy for Notre Dame in 2024. And you said it, and that's why he's going to get the attention and he deserves it. I mean, he does have that like day one, round one, overall number one kind of body, that frame, that athleticism. I kind of watched that spring game and I think people aren't talking enough about Emil Wagner. I think he looked awesome in that spring game, has the size, the strength. I think to play really, really good at that right tackle spot. So again, you talk about Jagasaw and he deserves it for sure because he is – I mean, he is kind of the promise, if you will. If they're going to be really good, I think he's going to be the guy to make it really good. But I think Wagner can play. I think my bigger question, frankly, comes much more in that interior and who's going to be the guys out of that group. They're returning a fair amount of them, but they need to play better than that. That's yeah, it. you look at, I mean, if the wide receiver room comes together and then the offensive line comes together, oh, we don't have question marks about Riley Leonard. Just got to have him stay healthy. We don't have question marks about that running back room. That's how this Notre Dame team kind of reaches their potential in the 2024 year. Going to the defensive side of the football, Dill, let's talk. I think this is the first time we included a true freshman in this segment. Let's talk about Bryce Young. And why I want to talk about Bryce Young is you look at Notre Dame on defense last year, you make no mistake about it. It was one of the best units that we saw in the country. How Notre Dame takes that next step into 2024 is can they get a little bit more production from the edge rushing department? You go back to 2023, where did a lot of the quarterback hurries in the havoc get caused from the inside? You look at the 2024 roster, we have no question marks about the interior of that defensive line. You're going to get a repeat performance. If Notre Dame takes that step on defense, I think the edge rushing department gets a little bit better. And you look back at last year outside of Gene Baptiste, there wasn't a single edge rusher that had over 11 quarterback hurries for Notre Dame. Can Bryce Young, as a true freshman, be that kind of guy for Notre Dame? Massive storyline for this program in 2024. And that's the unit I'm frankly, I think, is almost the most intriguing about what it can be because you're right. It wasn't a great unit last year. It was solid. It was like, again, it wasn't really close to the other Notre Dame units. Yeah. I didn't think, but I'm kind of looking. You kind of talk. Obviously, Bryce Young, you bring in RJ Oban, who is not a breakout player. He is as broken out as you can be as an edge rusher. But then you kind of look at some of these other guys who started to work in, in some spot duty. I mean, Junior T, Bubakar Traore. Those guys just feel like they have a little extra something to them than maybe what you had last year at that edge spot. I'm really excited to see what that group can do because, again, you haven't had those day one kind of guys at or day one NFL draft kind of guys in Notre Dame on that edge spot. You certainly have it in the interior, but I think you're starting to see those younger guys have a little bit higher of a ceiling, frankly. That's kind of why I went to Bryce Young. You talk about a guy that's just a box checker. The athletic profile is incredible for this kid. He only started playing, I think he was playing flag football before this, which is insane, his freshman year of high school. like This is a guy that just continued to get better, ended the 2024 class as a bona fide five-star, according to 24-7 sports. Uh, We'll see what he can do year one for Notre Dame. But again, when I start looking at the best version of this Notre Dame team, if this Notre Dame team is a bona fide national championship contender, I think that picture – 
includes Bryce Young being a guy as a true freshman. You're if, starting- if, they have, if they have that horsepower on the edge, you're looking at arguably the best defensive line in the country. 100% agree. Going back to the linebacker room, let's talk about another cat that has all the potential in the world going into year three, Jalen Sneed. Dill, this linebacker room has the potential to be really good. Like We know Jack Kaiser is a guy. Kingston Villiamo is coming in as a true freshman. Certainly could be included in this list. Wasn't sure if I wanted to go back-to-back true freshman, so I went with Jalen Sneed. Now, what excites me about this linebacker room is that you have some guys that you know what you're getting, but then you have just so much of a ceiling with guys like Jalen Sneed and Kingston Villiamo is But I think on top of that, what's a line? What's a hyper-athletic linebacker's best friend, having a good defensive line in front of you. You look at the inside of the defensive line, it's one of the best units in the country, allowing guys like Jalen Sneed and Kingston Villiamosa to play downhill, to play clean. And if you get these kids reaching their potential, that front seven, that combination of an elite defensive line, especially on the inside, and really, really good and hyper-athletic linebackers, That's kind of the recipe for Marcus Freeman and this defensive coaching staff to get really aggressive in terms of what they want to do in their front seven. And I'd be super interested to hear from Notre Dame fans about what they think this unit's going to look like, because I think this is one of those units that you kind of have, you do have your Jack Kaiser in there, Drake Bowen, guys who have played a little bit, but then you have a lot of unknowns who are like, even Kia Khan, who I thought looked awesome in the spring game. You got guys like Osbury who might be really good too. So you have a kind of a stable of guys who, again, have different skill sets, do different things. And I'm really wondering or kind of interested to see and maybe even hear what Notre Dame fans think this rotation is going to look like and how many are going to get meaningful reps. At least in my mind, it's exactly how you want a position room to look like. You got your high floor with guys like Jack Kaiser, but you got your high ceiling with guys like Kingston and Jalen Sneed. And that's exactly how you want a position room to look like heading into 2024. But again, answering that question of, you know, what's the best version of this Notre Dame defense, it probably has something to do with Jalen Sneed and Kingston Villiamoisa being absolute dudes in this Notre Dame defense. Going to our last player, let's go to the cornerback room where, and we ain't got no question marks about Benjamin Morrison. On the other side, you got to try to replace a guy like Cam Hart. This is a fan favorite for a lot of Notre Dame fans. Jaden Mickey played some really good football and it's kind of spot duty, if you will, in 2023. Faced 20 targets, only nine receptions. Started the Oregon State game in the bowl game. I know a lot of Notre Dame fans are fired up about this one. If you get a legit cornerback too, it combined that with Benjamin Morrison on the other side in the safety room that it's going to be. At. And then you talk about how good this front seven could be. Again, you're looking at, in my mind at least, just kind of a repeat performance of this Notre Dame defense. It's, it's going to be a top five unit in the country, which makes Notre Dame, again, one of the most dangerous teams in 2024. Yeah, I think you kind of you kind of hit it on the head or hit the nail on the head, if you will. I think you kind of look. This is almost like the position Michigan was in last year, where you there was like almost that one question yeah. that was kind of looming out there was who's going to be your second corner. And to be honest, I don't think you can play good defense unless you have a, a guy who's he doesn't need to be Benjamin Morris. And obviously, everyone knows there isn't going to be another one of him. But you can't be a liability if you do have that kind of lame duck out there at one corner spot it's really, really tough. So again, you kind of talk about guys who are, they're not like the headline guys. They're not the stars of this defense, but they're going to be kind of what this defense hinges on and how good they can be. I think you're right. And to talk about Jaden Mickey kind of having to have a really, really good year, because if he doesn't, then it kind of like almost puts everything else for not a little bit. Yeah. And you look at Jaden Mickey and say one, having Benjamin Morrison on the other side of you, that certainly helps you. If if you do feel like you need to give Jaden Mickey some safety help, you certainly can because you say, hey, Benjamin Morrison, you guy on the other side. But I think also if Jaden Mickey emerges as a guy that you trust on an island as well, then you should start getting creative in terms of those safeties work in the middle of the field, taking the football away, which is what they did so well in 2024. Again, Best version of the Notre Dame defense, that's that's what it's going to look like if Notre Dame is that national championship contender in the 2024 year deal, a team that is really starting to grow on me. Uh, you go back to a couple of months ago, and Notre Dame was getting a lot of buzz, and I was like, hey, I think this team's going to be good. I don't know if they're going to be as good as people are saying, and then you do more work on this team. You go back and watch the spring game, look at what they did in the portal and the young talent that's coming up and say, all right. I can see where the buzz is. Like this team has the chance 
to be really, really good in 2024. Fired up about it. A lot of different conversations to have about this Notre Dame team going into the summer. Appreciate you guys rocking with it again. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Appreciate you guys, and we'll talk to y'all later.